LFO is short for Low Frequency Oscillator. The LFO section on a synthesizer is something that creates a wave which can then be directed to other parts of the synthesizer so that the LFO can be making changes to the sound while you're doing something else. So for example, instead of us moving the filter cutoff point up and down manually like this, we can tell the LFO to do that for us. So if I set the LFO wave shape to triangle, that means it will move up and down in a regular pattern. And if I increase the intensity of the LFO, that will mean the LFO will now have some effect. And then I can set the target of the LFO to the control that I want the LFO to control. So I'm going to set this to cut off. And then instead of me doing that manually, the LFO will do the job for us as I play a key. The LFO section on your synthesizer will generally have three main controls. It will have a wave control, which will allow you to change the shape of the LFO wave. It will have a rate control, which will be the rate of the LFO wave, so how fast it moves up and down. And also an intensity or amount control. Different synthesizers will allow you to direct the LFO to different parts of the synthesizer and sometimes they will do this in different ways. On the monologue, we have a switch here, which will allow us to direct the LFO to the pitch, the shape or the cutoff. So I could change it to pitch and the LFO will cause the pitch to glide up and down. I could change it to shape and that will cause the wave shape position to shift, so we could do things such as pulse width modulation. Or I could come back to the filter cutoff setting that we had before. The microbrute allows you to do similar things. And the microbrute uses a more modular synthesis way of connecting the LFO to different parts of the synthesizer. So on the microbrute, you can use a small patch cable to connect the LFO output to one of these inputs on the modulation matrix, which will connect it to these oscillators or the filter. So let's take a look at what's really happening with the LFO as we use it. If we put the LFO wave to a triangle wave, the LFO will direct a signal to wherever we have the target set, so the cutoff point at this position, it will send a signal for the value of the filter cutoff point to be increased and decreased in a triangle kind of shape. We could visualize that on screen like this. So as you can see on that visual, kind of what's happening really is the LFO is doing the job of moving this control up and down according to the position of the LFO wave at that point in time. So if we change the LFO 
wave shape, we can then again see and hear how that affects the sound. So instead of the sound changing gradually, it might slide down and then step up suddenly, which will have... So if we switch to the sawtooth wave, it will have the effect of turning the target control down slowly and then up suddenly, like this. But the LFO can do that in, uh, in a more precise way than we can do it. So if we do it with the LFO, it will sound like this. And if we change the wave to a square wave, this will be more of a switching kind of sound, even though there will be a slight slope. Your synthesizer might also have a wave shape called sample and hold. Sample and hold is a kind of random stepping of the LFO wave. So it will randomly step to different positions over time. I don't have one of those available, but I can simulate it for you. It would sound a bit like this. If you use a sample and hold LFO at very high rates, you can get some really good sci-fi sound effects, especially if you route the LFO to the pitch. So here are a few quick examples of what you can do with an LFO with different rates and intensities and different target points for the LFO.